Welcome to No Not Them. Contrary to expectations, we are not the renowned EGOT winner Mike Nichols or R&B singer Chris Brown. He's a writer-director from upstate New York, and I'm a podcast host who enjoys his fair share of Pokemon. Today, we launch a multi-series of episodes dedicated to the 2024 Academy Awards. Now, over the next couple of days, Michael will be making predictions on the Oscars based on his knowledge of the movie industry. While I'll be making wild predictions about the Oscars with the accuracy of a fortune teller in a foggy crystal ball. Get ready to witness the cinematic chaos unfold as we attempt to foresee the future of Hollywood's most prestigious night. While I stumble through a maze of speculation, hearsay, and complete and utter blind optimism. So grab your popcorn and settle in as we embark on a roller coaster ride through the glitz and glamour and the occasional baffling choices that make up the Academy Awards. Buckle up, because in this episode, we're diving headfirst into the murky waters of Oscar predictions armed only with my gut feeling, dubious logic, and perhaps a touch of wishful thinking, while Michael is armed with his brain and his three-year winning streak. So with my crystal clear insight... Will my crystal clear insight lead me to victory or will it lead me to crash and burn in a blaze of cinematic glory? Or will Michael snatch the crown for a fourth year in a row? This is only one way to tell. This is no, not them. Michael, how are you? I, that was brilliant. The number of people <laughs> that after we film and they listen to all like 29 hours of it go, your friend's unhinged. None of those picks are going to get picked. Why doesn't he just pay attention? I'm like, I, he, and I always say, you know, if he doesn't like a movie, he doesn't want it to win any category. Um, so that's just the reality of it. That is the reality at all. And as, as, it's going to be a long three days, guys. I apologize right up front. My tongue is tied, but my logic is sound. My logic is sound. And we is have- <laughs> Not one bit, not one bit at all. <laughs> but uh, I've got to ask before we get into this, because we have a big recording session ahead of us. Uh, did you were you able to watch all the sh uh, movies this year, Michael? I made the conscious decision with work being as insane as it was to not at the time of filming this, I have not been able to get the international feature films. And it's not from a desire to not watch them. Work has been insane. I was telling Chris beforehand, um, housing has opened up and I'm a social worker outside of this. And basically I've been playing get people housed for the last like two weeks. So I've been kind of crazy. So I have not been able to watch the international films and I have not been able to get to the zone of interest, unfortunately. But I've seen quite literally everything else. It's just the international films and I think like one or two of the documentaries, they were just proving too hard to find. And I said, you know what? Forget it. We were actually well prepared for this this year. Uh, we had sort of been talking yeah. about this probably since uh, I would say November that we were probably well positioned compared to previous years. But we want to get into it because people aren't here to listen to you and I just ramble on because that's what they do on a regular basis. They're here to hear about my amazing predictions and what I believe is going to totally successfully win in 2024. That being said, probably not going to win. There's my rant. So I want to start with Best Sound. The nominees are The Creator, Maestro, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1, Oppenheimer and the zone of interest. Michael, I'm going to start off this first and I'm pretty sure you're, you know where I'm going with this one, but I'm saying Oppenheimer. I think it was a masterpiece in itself. So I think Oppenheimer is going to take the sound category. And the only reason I say that is because it, it, it truly made me feel like I was actually in New Mexico when everything was going on. there the, the sound moved the story along in a sort of nice pace. It didn't seem like I was watching a movie. It seemed like I was actually watching the people who were there. So that is my prediction through that murky crystal ball. For you, what do you what are you putting your money on? I know I just said I didn't watch it, but the zone of interest. I just think there's something about that movie and from like, what I've seen of 
you know, just in preparation for this, I knew I like, I don't have time to watch these. So I read through it. And from what I've read, what I've seen, what I've looked at, it looks like the sound is also equally brilliant. That's also not to say that we don't see a Mission Impossible pop up out of nowhere here. Um, but I just, I don't know. I'm going to hedge my bets on the zone of interest. I think Oppenheimer is going to win a lot. I don't think this is one of them. As the sound was good, I just think it was one of the weaker aspects of the movie. Uh, well, it, um, I didn't mind the zone of interests, but it wasn't my favorite movie. It wasn't my favorite okay. movie of the year. And I'll just, uh, yes, I'm putting that out there on the record right now. And I'll, you'll go, what the fuck were you saying that for? Because then about two like categories later, you choose zone of interest as one of your winners. So uh, just putting that out there. Uh, but so for you, you're going with the zone of interest, a movie you have not seen. So I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. I might win this category. I feel like you won this category last year too. Yeah, I think it was one of the three that I won because I won that and Jamie Lee Curtis and I still hold that over your head every time we talk. I literally got every category but like three of them last year and I think those were the only three you got. Production, sound, and Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, so you are going with the Zone of Interest movie you've not seen. I'm going with Oppenheimer for Best Sound at the 2024 Academy Awards. Uh, let's head over to original score now. Um, American uh, The nominees are American Fiction, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, Killers of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things. Michael, I started off the last round. Who? Do, who, who first off, I'm assuming you watched all these movies. Yeah, that Indiana Jones was rough. Can we stop? Let, leave Harrison alone. He's done. He's yeah. tired. I think Harris is just in it for the money now. He's like, what's the paycheck? And show me where the paycheck goes. And that I'll be happy. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna put I am gonna put Oppenheimer down for this one. Okay. Why? Any particular reason? I, as my, my gut instinct was Indiana Jones because of John Williams. That was my gut, gut instinct. But last time we had that gut, gut instinct on score was- um, Last year, I think. With John Williams. Yeah. And he, oh, score, I, it was score, not um, sound that I got wrong last year. It was score. And uh, John Williams let me down. So I'm still feeling a little bitter. Uh, I'm gonna go Oppenheimer because I do think the score for that was brilliant. Um, I. I'm going to, Killers of the Flower Moon was really just hard, hard for me. Uh, I, I don't know if I like PTSD blacked it out, but I just, it was hard for me to focus on it. It was three and a half hours long. Like I was, it was right after New Year's Eve. So I was real hungover here. I'm not even going to pretend. Um, but like in looking back and remembering the score, I'm really just like, I'm rooting for, for Oppie. Oppie. So two for two, and we have not agreed once yet. So this is the great thing about this show because we never agree on these things. But I'm hedging my bets. I'm hedging my bets that John Williams is going to pull this out some. <laughs> not with Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. <laughs> the Dial of Destiny. I think he's going to win this uh, because he said he was retiring. Now he's not retiring. Now he was retiring, but he's possibly retiring. So. I think, you know what? Give the guy his due. Just give him an Oscar. Let him go off to the sunset and just retire. Uh, I, that's where I'm going. I just, I, I, I'm not doing it on anything but the fact that it's John Williams. That's Rockin'. It. And Rock and roll. Period. My gut instinct is telling me John Williams is the clear winner for this category. But I could be wrong. So I mean, we didn't see. give it to Diane Warren yet. And she's had how many nominations? <laughs> Um, so you are going with for best original score Oppenheimer <laughs> I'm going best original score Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny gotta, throw, gotta throw Indiana something you know he fights off Nazis. a bridge <laughs> he fights Nazis why can't you why can't you be excited for that uh, oh uh, Jesus we're, we're turning to best original song here uh, so the nominees for Best Original Song are The Fire Inside from The Flaming Hot, I'm Just Ken from Barbie, It Never Went Away from American Symphony, 
was a whole a song for my people from killers of the flower moon and what was i made for from barbie um i you started the last one i'm gonna go here I, I was conflicted on this one. I'm not going to lie. I was back and forth between two different uh, songs and I was back and forth on both of the Barbie songs. I am not a big Billie Eilish fan to be just up front uh, on this show. Uh, I just, I, I just, I, I'm not, but I will say sort of, sort of a tangent moment here. I kind of jumped around on Beyonce. <laughs> so Wait, what? I oh, you just like her stupid little country thing that's happening right now. Do not come for country, okay? Do not come for country. That's the only reason you've come around on Beyonce. Yes, 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 yes. That's why I don't like Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift left country. She can go away. So I was back and forth on this one, and I had originally put down what was I made for from Billie Eilish. And it, it, it had, I had it until probably about three or four days ago. And I just feel like, I'm just Ken deserves the award more because as a Canadian, I support my Canadian brother and sister who were down there singing. I'm just Ken at the top of his lungs, Mr. Ryan Gosling. And if only one thing comes out of this Oscars this year is he is going to be on stage singing that song live at the Oscars. So I'm going with, I'm just Ken from Barbie. What about you, Michael? <laughs> Um, what was like, I made like for? <laughs> well, first of all, remember at the beginning when I was like, can you pronounce all the things? And then <laughs> we jumped head first and I said, all righty, rock and roll. It's not going to win. So why would I care about pronouncing it right? <laughs> watch it win. Oh, watch Diane Warren finally win. Good for her. I hope she wins. For I, I'm not voting for her, but I hope she wins. I'm voting for what do I, what was I made for from Barbie. I think uh, there's a lot of talk right now in the universe. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Here comes the algorithm, everyone. So anyone who's about to tune in and listen to this, just tune out for like 10 minutes because he's going to tell you exactly why this is going to win because the universe and all the other shows are telling you that this is going to win. Go ahead. Gut feeling. No, that Billie Eilish, there's a lot of like gut feelings from people about Billie Eilish being the first to or being one of the youngest EGOT winners because of how brilliantly she is composing music, creating music. She's already winning, like, she's already won a Grammy and an Oscar and she's like, what, 10 years old? So like, there's a lot, there's a big push right now just supporting Billie Eilish. She's also pioneering a, a new genre of music. Um, is it, it country? No, it's, it's, you need to let that go, Elsa. Nope, nope. But I th I really think to knock or to not, um, I'm just really not going to bet against Billie Eilish on anything lately. Um, she really is just, she's just doing it and she's doing it well. And it might not necessarily be for me, but I can recognize that that little girl is very talented and her brother is very talented. You, at the end of the day, I wouldn't be upset with either one of these songs no. winning, to be honest. I, I, Looking at it as a catchier song, I I I think I'm just Ken is more catchier, and that's just my personal opinion. For those, but what was I made for is all over the radio right now. Not I'm just Ken. Yeah, but I don't have American radio. We we up here in Canada, we lack our Canadian people, so we play I'm just Ken. Is that really on the radio? Oh God, I don't know. I don't listen to the radio. Who listens to the radio? Everything's podcast now. Well, no, my husband got, we got into an accident. Um, I was not driving. Um, and so we had a rental car while the truck was being fixed for three weeks. And that and that Beyonce, this ain't Texas bullshit has been like the only things that's on the radio to the point of insanity. I, I, I'm not so I'm not entirely unconvinced Beyonce may not win the Oscar for this ain't Texas. We can get into that whole Grammy debacle with what Jay-Z said there at the uh Grammys last in January later on in next month's episode. Rock um so you are going with what was I made for from Barbie? And I'm going with I'm just Ken from Barbie. So maybe Barbie will actually take home an award this season. I Who hope knows? so. 
oh, it's me now. So wow. do I have to spell it out to you? Yes. <laughs> um, the next category is going to be live action short film. And the nominees are The After, Invincible, Night of Fortune, Red, White, and Blue, and The Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar. Um, so I'm going to go first. I think uh, we're finally going to give Wes Anderson his dues. I think it's going to go to The Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar. I really, really do. I think it's time to give him his flowers. He's been nominated how many times? And this was bloody incredible. I actually agree with you. Rocket! <laughs> I actually agree with you. So I watched all five of these films. They all had good merits to them. And I will say that uh, Red, White, and Blue, I, I enjoyed thoroughly. Was it my yeah. favorite? But it was really good. Uh, I'm just trying to remember if, uh, because I watched it a while back, was Night of Fortune. And I think I remember it. And it was really, really like, ooh. Weird. Uh, it was just weird. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think you're right. I think Wes Anderson is about to get his, I think it's his first Oscar, if I'm not mistaken. Because yes, I don't think he has he's never actually, won. He's been nominated, but he's never won. Um, yeah. So it is time that Wes Anderson finally uh, walks across that stage, unless they do it like they did a few years ago when Ellen was the host and they made all the live action, the, the short films all uh, give their Oscar speeches in the aisles of the ceremony. <laughs> That was weird. No, thank you. <laughs> exactly. No, no, thank you. <laughs> so I'm going with the wonderful story of Henry Sugar. I think it was brilliantly done. I think it was uh, yeah. a great story. And I truly think it epitomizes what the Oscars kind of are looking for when they look for those live action shorts. Not saying that previous winners aren't as good. I'm just saying Wes Anderson knocked it out of the park. Yeah, Sports it was just reference. visually. Visually, it was stunning. And like, a lot of it was that single shot too, which was so cool. Like just the seamless transition. I'm, that's not easy to do. And they did it so well. Um, okay. So the next category, animated short. Recap. 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 So recap. So recap yeah. You and I are both <laughs> deciding to go with the wonderful world of Hen or wonderful story of Henry Sugar. Because when you recap, then I put a graphic with our little photos beside it. I was going, yeah. Fine, for the graphique. I'll do it for the graphique. Okay. The next category is going to be animated short film. And the nominees are Letter to a Pig, 95 Senses, Our Uniform, Pachyderm, War is Over, inspired by the music of John and Yoko. So you, you're up. What do you think? Who's so I, winning I, it? I had a hard time on this one. I'll be honest. I had a hard time on this one. So do you watch all five? I'm assuming, correct? The only one I could not find was 95 Census. So I watched the trailer because a lot of the times I feel with this category, it goes to whatever's got the best animation. Yeah. So I had a very hard time picking this and I'm still hedging my bets. The Like literally, this is why I'm trying to extend it because I feel like I could be wrong here. You know what? I'm going with my gut. I'm going with my gut here. I'm saying letter to a pig. What was the other one you were debating between? War is over. Stop, because that's what I was having the same fucking debate. <laughs> yeah. The same fucking debate. Yeah. And I went with war is over, inspired okay. by the music of John and Yoko. I uh, I was like, it's either going to be letter to a pig or war is over. Watch us and both be wrong. It, it, and I think that's what's going to happen. I think that's what's going to happen. And our uniform is going to win. Oh, I was going to say Packy Derme. Or really? Derme. Okay. I think that might has, has a really good shot. But I'm going with War is Over. I think, oh, I couldn't resist the allure of Yoko and John. Not a be I'm not a big Beatles fan. I just thought the the animation was amazing. I'll oh. just be, I, I think they both were really, really good. And that's what really had my bet. And it was the only category in this whole entire, well, actually there's two more that we're going to talk about in tomorrow. It was the <laughs> only one out of three. <laughs> it's the only one of like nine that I had issues with trying to change, trying to pick. But I I, I don't know what it was, but I think letter to, letter to a pig is, is, it squeaks it out. Or if it doesn't win, it's going to be a split vote, and I think something else is going to win. Okay, so to recap, Chris, you are going with Letter to a Pig, and I am going with War is Over, inspired by the music of John and Yoko. 
So our next category is going to be documentary short film. And the nominees are The ABCs of Book Burning, The Barber of Little Rock, Island in Between, The Last Repair Shop, and Nai Nai and Waipo. So I went first last time. I I know I was about to I was gearing up for dramatic effect. Oh my god. Um so I went with the ABCs of book burning for this one. I think that the doc, the storytelling with it was really great. It's a really poignant conversation right now in politics um and it's not one that you would think to see a documentary about. It and those kids were just so darn cute. Where did you go with? Sure. So I had that I had that it was because I watched this in a weird order because I couldn't for the love of me find the last repair shop and Nai Nai Wapo at all. Disney until Plus. You, if you wait until I tell my story, see, this is why <laughs> you cut off like, my dramatic effect. I'm cutting off your dramatic effect. So I couldn't find those until you said they're on Disney Plus. So I had the ABC of book burning locked in i said this is great this is amazing storytelling this is uh a great like you said it 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 basically is what is going on in society in 2024 2023 but gut feeling here crystal ball here um i went with the last repair shop because it's canadian oh jesus <laughs> that's it no, oh Jesus! You just spent lock, twenty lock, minutes stock and barrel. You literally spent twenty minutes talking about Billie Eilish and her brother, and I say I'm going with a Canadian film because I'm a Canadian, and you're going. Ooh, ooh. No, I mean, is there anyone else Canadian on the list that I should be prepared for you to pick? Ryan Gosling. <laughs> I, I, I liked it. I truly did like it. I It moved me a little bit. And I'll just be honest, it, it wasn't like my favorite of the group, but it wasn't really a strong category to begin with. I think they were yeah. all good in their own merits. I just was like, mm, can we talk about Island in between for a second? Sure. Did you find it confusing as fuck as I did? I was not <laughs> sure what was happening for like 13 seconds. I was like, what's happening? What's going on here? And I was... It was a day that one of my, I made my friend who does not watch movies and who does not watch anything with subtitles, watch like 10 different shorts, eight of which, which had subtitles. And she, by the time we got to Island in between halfway through, she looks at me and she goes, you need to shut this off. I, I'm going to fight you. And so I shut it off and I came back to it later and I still didn't know what was happening. Okay. I had to restart it and just still okay. know. Okay. I'm glad I'm not the only one because I watched it. I was like, I, I just spent my entire night just trying to figure out what that ha what happened in that movie. Okay, okay. It could have been a full length documentary, and I think it would have been a strong contender. I think that was the issue with it. It was too much content about something people didn't know for a seventeen minute short. And to recap. Uh, I am choosing the ABCs of book burning and Chris is cho choosing the, the winner Canadian <laughs> last repair shop. You're next. No, your feature film again, documentary feature film. You said, Oh, geez, Louise. All right. You're literally um, doing the next two in a row. Hi, everyone. We actually planned things out prior to recording, but you know, Michael forgets halfway through. And can I, can, Okay. 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 I, I, I'm, I, I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this in there right now. You have the worst head movement in for editing ever, because when you talk, you're like, Hey, 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 I'm a mover. I'm sorry. I, I'm Italian. We move. We you're do. Gay. You're gay. And I'm gay. <laughs> I'm hit twice with movement. And I just realized I did it again and I'm going to keep doing it. Sorry. No worries. Go ahead. Anyways, um, documentary feature film and the nominees are Bobby Wine, The People's President, The Eternal Memory, Four Daughters, To Kill a Tiger, and 20 Days in Marupal. 
Uh, pretty obvious which one I'm going with. Uh, I think it's probably the clear front runner, and I think it's been the clear front runner since the nominations were announced back in January. I'm going with 20 Days of Maripal. Pal. And I, I just think it was a good movie. I don't... It, 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 I watched the other ones. I didn't like the other ones. I thought it was a very weak category this year. And I'm just being honest. I think they all have their merits. I think they're all, they all can go away saying that they'd be nominated. But mm, 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 mm. you? No, I agree. I also picked 20 Days. Um, I just feel that with Bobby Wine, it was pretty much the same as Navalny, which mm-hmm. won last year. Um, but Navalny had a stronger point of view. Um, that's not to say that Bobby Wine was bad. I just, it just, I feel like I was rewatching Navalny, which is unfortunate. I, I, it almost maybe could have, and of course, timing on these things, like you don't want to wait. It almost maybe needed like a year in between as a cool off for it to have a stronger hit. Um, Eternal Memory, I was very confused it was it was like it was trying to be a a feature film but it was real a real story it was like this feels very too artsy for for me and i'm the the avant-garde artsy bitch and like it was too much for me you know how you were talking about when we were talking about documentary short films and how island in between should have been an actual feature film this should have been a short thank you yeah (laughs) They could have cut like a good like 45 minutes out of that movie and I would have said, okay, I get you what you're coming at. But halfway through the movie, I started picking up my phone. And when I start picking up my phone, I've lost interest. I didn't do that yeah. for a lot of movies, but that was one of them that I was like, okay. And then Four Daughters and To Kill a Tiger, I couldn't find. Um, so They're not going to win. I don't. I, I thought I 20 Days is pretty much the one that I've been uh, yeah. hedging my bets on. So to recap, you and I both agree. 20 days in Marupal. Um, Next is support actress in a supporting role. And the nominees are Emily Blunt from Oppenheimer, Danielle Brooks from The Color Purple, America Ferreira from Barbie, Jodie Foster from Nyad, and Divine Joy Randolph from The Holdovers. So... Ooh. And uh, and for those who are listening, as Michael joked about at the beginning of the recording, that is why I don't do names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, all righty. So I think this is the pretty safe bet. Yeah. We've got the same one here. Divine. Yep, she's winning everything. She's been she, winning up and down. You know what? It's not even the fact that she's winning everything. She gave the best performance. Really? You you were going with Danielle, weren't you? Um Jody? I was going with Jody. I would have gone with Jody Foster, I think, for best performance. Um my winner is not in this uh Fantasia? category. No, Fantasia would be best. Okay. Um Ooh. Rosamund Pike from Saltburn. Um oh. but we said fuck you to Saltburn. Um, that's the performance I think gave the best this year. And that I didn't, okay, unpopular opinion. I didn't love Divine's performance. I think she had one really good scene. And that was it. I, but I also, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it as someone because it, it talked about grief in a mother during a time when grief wasn't acceptable because when you're fighting in Vietnam and then you come back and you're expected to uh, be proud of the men and women who have died over in Vietnam. And when your, your son does, it's hard. And her attachment, and I forget the name of the actors right now. And I know Paul Giamatti, but the supporting actor, um, because he's a first, it was his first role he ever did. I think her connection to him uh, throughout it, especially right after the Christmas party scene, and they all start like actually having that in depth conversation around the dinner table. It 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 truly broke my heart, and it truly made me feel. 
And that, that's just my own personal opinion. For those who want to send me emails, send them away. I'll spot them in the appropriate location. No, but I'm I mean, divide. I think it's the clear front run, and I think it's the clear only, like. Oh, I think she's got it hands down. I think yeah. that's locked in. Um, I, I think this is um, Ki Hui Kwan from last year for everything, everywhere, all at once. Yes. Like, we all knew going in that he was winning. We all know going in she's winning. And like, that's okay. I'm not mad at her winning. Yeah. Um, and it was, the the one scene was really incredibly compelling for me. I just think in terms of the overall beginning, middle, end journey, it was okay. I mean, definitely nominator, but it was okay. I, so to read... Yeah. Oh, you, no, you go. I was going to say, I I like Jodie Foster's uh, portrayal uh, in Nay- Nayada. Uh, it wasn't my favorite, uh, but she was good. Mm. Um, Emily Blunt was my second choice. Okay. Because when Emily Blunt was in Oppenheimer, she stole the show. Oh, she was brilliant in that. Exactly. So that's where that's who my second choice would have been was Emily Blunt. But I'll go to mine. All righty. So to recap, you and I both went with Divine Joy Randolph from The Holdovers for Best Actress in a Supporting Role. And finally, to recap, to not recap, but to uh, finalize episode one of our three-episode journey of the 2024 Oscars, we are going to actress in a leading role. And the nominees are, if I can pronounce all their names correctly, Michael will give me a chocolate and I'm excited, Annette Benning for Niada, Lily Gladstone, Killers of the Flower Moon, Sandra Holler, Anatomy of a Fall, Carrie Mulligan, Maestro, and Emma Stone, Poor Things. Now, Michael, I said that I had a few conflicting moments in this uh, this uh, predictions. This, this was is one, one of them. This was my one of them. So I had my odds on favorite. I had my dark horse. And then I had my, oh no, what's going on? She could potentially win this because there's a groundswell going on underneath the sort of rumblings of the world so i think i think the clear front runners were emma stone and lily gladstone and i think that's just i'm just putting that out on the table uh they've both been picking up uh uh, nomination or awards uh throughout the last few months um but uh annette benning was the sort of dark horse in this category people started no she people actually started saying that annette benning was going to start winning some because people were watching the film finally and they were actually excited and they were liking it. Hmm. So she, I think I sent you that article. If I didn't, then I should have. Hmm, sorry. Um, so the two that I had, I had Lily Gladstone and Emma Stone. And I was very conflicted on this category because this is the category that I always screw up because this is the category that you always hold over my head since Jessica Chastain won three years ago, two years ago, however many years ago for uh, the eyes of Tammy Faye. I'm going with my gut on this one. I think it's high time, and I think Lily Gladstone takes it. I also put Lily Gladstone, so she better win it now. Your curse better not affect me because I really want her to win it. Um, I had the same issue you had with Lily Gladstone and Emma Stone, and they've just been trading awards. Also, side note, very proud of you using that little algorithm moment going on. Um, Cause I know you wanted to put Sandra Hewler. No. Really? Yeah. My person's not on the list. Who's your person? Natalie Portman. Oh, talk about a snub, but like also. For best support. Like... We'll talk about that in supporting actor, but that was a snub in that. Natalie Portman gave a performance and a half in December, uh, May, September. I think it's called. Yeah. May, December. Yeah. May, December. I mean, let's be very real. I've said from the beginning, I didn't think Emma or not Emma, uh, Carrie Mulligan or Annette Benning should be there, that it should be Fantasia and Greta Lee. Um, So. I can we talk talk about, can we talk about past lives here? Oh, can we talk about past lives? That because her, the main actress in that should have been nominated. Should, should, and so should the director. Yes. So we'll talk about that later on. But the main actress in that should have been nominated. And if she was, I guarantee she would have won. 
A hundred percent. Well, it would have come down to her and Lily Gladstone and you would have seen Emma Stone going, great, love this. Because Emma she Stone has- mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, Greta Lee uh, was so good. I mean, I'm, hold on. No, I, Before I go on to Greta Lee's incredible, let me just pick my winner so you can all scream at your computer while I go on this brief tangent. Yeah, Lily Gladstone. I think it's yeah. Lily. Um, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm easily excitable. And Past Lives was one of those things that I'm very excited about. Um, I just think it just like, um, last year, women talking, I think yep. that it was one of the best films and it got, I think the same categories that women talking got a screenplay nomination, best picture, and that's it. And it deserves so much more. Yep. I agree wholeheartedly. So yep. to so- recap, best actress in a leading role, we are both going with Lily Gladstone for killers of a flower moon. Michael, uh, it is always a pleasure. Uh, We will be back tomorrow at 10 o'clock Mountain Standard Time, so 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, for round two of Oscar Predictions 2024. Until then, this is being Chris Brown, not the R&B singer. He is being Mike Nichols, not the EGOT winner. I am the clairvoyant who with the crystal ball. He is the algorithm king of the Oscars. This has been No, Not Them.